today we're going to take a minute and we're going to go over the big difference that sizes can make when it comes to inking brushes. We're going to test out a size 0, a size 1, and a size 4 so you guys can see just how different it is. Um, sometimes it's difficult to express how important size can be for your inking brushes. So to start out with, we have three heads already drawn. They're all about the same size. There's nothing really significantly different about them. They're all the same level of complexity. We have three brushes, two of which are Creative Mark Kalinsky Sable brushes. These are Rhapsody brushes. One's in a zero, one is in a size one. And we also have a uh, Princeton Kalinsky Sable brush. This was sent in our Inktober Art Snacks. We also are inking in the Inktober Denik, not because I particularly recommend it, because I don't, but because, hey, I pay good money for this thing, I'm going to use it. So hopefully we can get you guys ready to pick out a brush and ready to start inking before Inktober actually starts. The materials you're going to need for this tutorial are one paper towel, a scrap sheet of paper. Um, if you have them, dinky dips, they are fantastic. Your ink, we're using the Kuretake Sumi ink that was sent again in that Inktober Art Snacks. And you're also going to want a cup of clean water. So I'm going to go grab my cup of clean water and I'll be right back. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with the size zero. I just have to find it. There we go. Of course, I have a cat who wants to be in my lap. It's very difficult to ink with a cat in your lap. I do not recommend it. Now, zero is not quite the smallest brush you can get. There are definitely miniatures brushes out there that go all the way to four zero. Um, but it is one of the smaller ones I enjoy working with. If you're heavy handed, but you want to be able to do a lighter, del more delicate line weight, a size zero may be the right one for you. You may even want to go smaller than a zero. Um, I probably ought to myself. I seem to have gotten even more heavy handed. Um, I don't think I have any double zeros in my studio at this time. I used to and my cat literally ate it. Um, so I will have to get back to you guys after I've been able to replace that. And that may take a while. One of the other nice things about smaller brushes is they tend to be much less expensive than the larger ones. Um, you can get the Creative Mark Rhapsody, the smaller brushes, for under 14 When I'm inking, I usually ink exterior features first, so things that would overlap the face, like the hair. And I mentioned this in other videos, and I never seem to actually enact it on camera. I always seem to be inking from my wrist, which is why I get kind of janky lines. And it's part of the reason why I'm so heavy-handed. You really want to ink from your arm. It allows you more control, and you're less likely to be shaky or heavy-handed. Unfortunately, it always seems like stuff on this channel is do as I say, not as I do. So anytime you're going to need to lay your brush down for a significant portion of time, you want to go ahead and clean it off so the ink doesn't dry in the bristles or in the hairs.
All right, so that was inked with a size zero brush. All right, let's move on over now to the size one brush. It doesn't look substantially bigger than the zero. And y'all see how my hand's hanging off of the edge of the notebook? That is bad. If you guys are doing this at home, please remove your paper from the notebook, sketchbook, whatever you want to call it. That creates a pivot point. It makes it harder to control what you're doing. I apologize for not really being able to zoom in. Um, I'm still working with that sort of makeshift camera setup. Which is great for keeping my head out of the shot, but terrible for getting a close up in my working area. I pretty much can't move the camera at all. For me, um, it definitely seems like the one and the zero handle pretty similar. The one is also fairly inexpensive. Probably only a couple dollars more at Jerry's and they do go on sale. So you might want to keep an eye out. In person, they definitely go on sale. I bought a bunch of them for watercolor painting a while back on sale. So, um, you know, you want to, if you have a Jerry's Artorama in person, you want to go check that out pretty frequently. I'd actually really like to uh, further explore the Princeton Kalinsky sable brushes, like the one we were sent in Art Snacks. I was at Michael's the other day and I didn't see any. And I don't have a dick blick in my area. I'm pretty sure Jerry's doesn't sell them, so um, I'd prefer not to order them online. I don't like ordering my brushes sight unseen because sometimes you can get some really um, ruined brushes, <laughs> brushes that have been kicked around the stock room. Um, so I'll just have to hold out until I can find them in person. Also, the more you warm up before you start inking, the better your inks are going to end up being. I, I can tell my one inks are already a little bit better than my zero inks, and that's because I, since I have a lot to cover today, I pretty much went straight into recording. All right, that's our size one inks. Finally, we're going to go on up to our size four. And I will need to condition my brushes after this. You can see that line weight is already much heavier. Also, the sable doesn't have particularly good snap. It tends to bend in one direction and stay bent in that direction. Heavier line weight like this is fine for cartoonier styles, and I have to rustle something like that up for you guys. It's also good for larger drawings or heavier fills. For inexperienced inkers, inkers who are used to working with tech pins or brush pins, uh, you may find it very difficult to control, um, and you may find it puts down a lot of ink. Like the ink just sort of pools on the page. You can see my hands are also on the spiral binding. It makes it very difficult to control the brush. Another reminder that you should remove your pages from your sketchbooks when inking. Or work in books large enough that your hand isn't resting either off the edge of the page or on the spiral. All 
right, guys, that is um, a very quick overview over the size differences between a zero, a one, and a four. Something that's important to keep in mind is that different uh, different brands do, uh, the sizes do vary slightly from brand to brand. So something that might be a four in um, one brand may be a three or a two in another. Something else to consider is that Sumi brushes like this here run on a different size scale. This is a zero and the zero is even larger than a Princeton four. So um, between different types of brushes, the sizes are not um, correlated. So um, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me during this little demonstration. Um, hopefully I'll see you guys again really soon where I further demonstrate the size for brush. Um, if you're looking for inking tutorials or brush inking tutorials, please check out my advanced inking techniques uh, card here and my um, tutorials card here and um, head on over to the blog for advice, tips, tricks, and tutorials on how to ink. Uh, both with brush pins and with nibs and with brushes. I'm Becca Hilburn. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Thank you so much to my patrons who help make videos like this possible. I purchased the Inktober Art Snacks box as a thank you to you guys. Um, so these videos are sort of um, a supplemental thank you. If you enjoy content like this, please remember to leave a like. It helps me out a lot. It lets YouTube know that you value what I do. If you have any questions, feel free to leave us a comment and I'll get to you as soon as I can. Uh, this month has been great for comments. We've been getting a lot of really good questions. So I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with. If you really, really like this video, please take a moment to use those social networking buttons down below to share it with your friends. You would be helping me out immensely. Um, if you really, really, really like this video, head on over to the blog for even more great art contact. And if you'd like to help fund future videos like this, please head on over to my Patreon at Patreon patreon.com slash natosoup to join the natosoup community. Your financial support is what makes videos like this possible and it helps make it um, feasible for me to dedicate the time spent away from doing freelance, spent away from working on comics, spent away from working on commissions, all things that pay, well not the comics, but conventions, freelance, and commissions pay up front. Um, this does not so you helping me out by watching at least 30 minutes, 30 seconds of my ads before you watch my videos. So instead of just clicking through, you watch part of that ad and you joining the Patreon and you sharing these videos to your social networks. All of those things help me out a lot. And that helps me continue to grow this channel and it gives me the motivation I need to record more videos. So I really do depend on you guys for help and support and encouragement. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Thank you so much for watching my video. It's always great to see you guys. I hope to see you guys again really soon. Bye.